You've been taking the story forward, and I imagine that the first place to begin is with the family and the loved ones and those who knew or who know the suspect that is um, the subject matter here yeah. today. Yeah, well, certainly, and that's exactly what we did. Went all the way to... Uh, to Soweto, as we know that Velile was also a secretary of one of the branches in Soweto. He's not a secretary anymore. And um, we managed to get a hold of um, his wife, and we spoke to his wife about the incident that took place, and she really was, um, was willing to take us into a confidence in terms of what took place on the 5th of July. She said she dropped him off somewhere, and after she had dropped him off, the police then stopped her and then asked her to then follow them all the way to the police station. At the police station, she says, um, they asked her, where is the money? Where are the guns? And she kept on saying that, I don't understand what you want from me. I don't know what you are speaking about. And they, as she says, um, alleges that um, she, she was then slapped by these police officers in front of other police officers at um, this police station. She says that she was humiliated. And eventually, when they pointed her to um, one of the vehicles that was at a police station, and they said, look who's in the car. Is this not your boyfriend? She then says, um, she looked at them and said, this is not my boyfriend. This is my husband. What has he done? And um, they weren't able to explain exactly what it is that, um, that um, he has done. But just take a listen to some of the emotions um, that she has gone through. And even when she was speaking about how her children found out about this incident, and one of her sons, she said, is, is even struggling at work, uh, rather is struggling at school to cope with the schoolwork. And just listen to her response uh, to the news that her husband has been linked to these cash and transit highs. All right. I was so shocked. I was so shocked. I, I'm not even coping. I've actually even lost weight because I can't even eat. I can't even talk to him. What really is, is, is going on, you know? And if he really did that, nah, which I doubt which he would have done that. I mean, it would have shown Magaza ne Malinjini, Gubengi Bonina, Lomale, Gubengi Spendi, Lugube, C, Sebenzi, Sile. We ne Inju, the lounge is so big. It is so open. We don't even have it in room suite. I'm sure I would have done a lot of changes in him, you know. And that's Aldrin Simpia speaking to the wife of Errol Velile, a present. With the line of questioning that police took, um, Aldrin, did they suspect at all that she may have been an accomplice in um, some of the crimes that he's committed? You would assume that, just considering that the police said to her, where are the guns, where is the money and also I asked her then about whether her husband has any firearms and she did indicate and confirm that yes indeed he does have one gun and but that is a licensed firearm she says it is in line with the work that he also does at um, at, uh, at 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 Lutuli house she then spoke about this identity parade that took place just before the court appearance and according to her the information that she got from the lawyer because she hasn't been able to speak to her husband um, the lawyers then indicated to her that while the four suspects appeared um, for this identity parade, none of them were linked by the victims of these hijackings um, to the crime that has uh, that the crime that has taken place. And she said that uh, it's clear that they don't have anything on him, and she only wishes that they will be able to release her, and then he would be able to explain to her how he has been linked um, to this um, cash in transit heist. Given how high profile a story and a matter this has become, has the police minister weighed in at all? Well, certainly, it's actually this morning that we heard from the police minister that um, this suspect has been linked to two other uh, cash in transit heists. And let's just take a listen to what he had to say in Cape Town. He works for the organizing department on temporal basis at Lutuli House. So, which means when there is organizing and mobilizing for election or any other thing, he gets invited. Uh, this is almost his third cash heist. Uh, this guy. This is third cash heist. It's not the first one. I think two are at, uh, uh, are at uh, Northwest and plus this one. Uh, he has jumped to the court twice. Uh, uh, one was drunk and driving that was supposed to appear in court <coughs> and uh, it did not appear in court. Aldrin, just hearing what the police minister says, you know, it, it seems like 
they believe he was consistently part of um, you know these cash and transfer ties but mm -hmm. at the same time he's been able to maintain full-time employment and you've managed to track down one of his uh, former managers too yes and certainly um, he has been working at Lutulia house for um, close to 12 years if I'm not mistaken and this particular person that we called got a hold of Mpo as he says that um, Velile is a childhood friend as well they grew up together in so where to remembers working with Velil as well while he was the secretary of one of the branches, um, one of the branches in Soweto. But quite importantly, at his office, this is now Adam Paul's office at Lutuli House while he was still the chairperson of COSAS, um, Velile worked in his office as an administrator. And when Mpo then left, then Velile was then taken in by the ANC and he now works part or uh, now works as a national organ organizer. And just take a listen to how Mpo details exactly what the work is that Velile does for the ANC? He was the organizer. Um, what I knew, uh, he was like an organizer that would um, organize uh, activities of the ANC. He would be uh, in different provinces um, doing audits uh, for ANC membership, um, ensuring that where they are uh, in fighting within structures of the African National Congress. Um, he would be deployed to ensure that he goes and work there uh, to stabilize the branches, uh, the provinces, the regions. Now, well, Aldrin, you've been able to paint a picture of the separate lives, seemingly at least by the accounts of what the police have on record of uh, Mr. President as a suspect and what those who knew him um, have, have described him as. But, I mean, in terms of his wife, does she believe that this is where the story ends, where um, allegations are concerned? Or does she believe that perhaps he's being um, used as a scapegoat of sort in, in a bigger um, scheme or ploy seeming because she's just not convinced yeah. that he was responsible. Well, certainly, she's, um, she's confused about um, this, this set incident. And that's the reason why she kept on stressing in that interview with me that she wants an opportunity to speak to him. She says she has been trying um, to convince the police to give an opportunity to, 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 to speak to him just to get to the bottom of um, this incident. But what we should also not forget is that um, Velile has also been linked to a, another story which relates to an alleged corruption deal which um, links the former, which involves the former Minister of Rural Development, Gugile Nguindi. And in that matter, it was alleged that there was a, a farm in Limpopo um, that was sold to Velile and, uh, and one of his business partners. And um, not the proper procedures were followed in that matter. And understand that um, it was Deloitte that did an investigation into this matter and their audit. And there was some sort of recommendation that um, Google and Gwinti should be charged uh, with corruption. At least what, she, what Zanella did in the interview is that she confirms that the farm does exist. However, though, she doesn't know the nitty-gritties of what exactly um, this uh, farm business um, um, entails. And just listen to how she, how she spoke about um, this farm dealing. All right. farm, you know what, and then the partner almost push her money. They started having uh, my problems because they started mismanaging e, e farm. So Uveli couldn't be hands on if I mean most of the time he was this side. So Umo almost had relocated to Elimpopo. And then only later he found out to get good to now the the farm say yawa his Uting say in Inko Mon and everything. So they are very very busy but I attended that case a farm otherwise I Hmm. What was his role at the farm? I, I'm not sure. Aldrin, it seems like there's a lot more to the story than meets the eye. A lot of unanswered questions, Good, but I also can't shake the feeling that there's a lot more about Mr. President that is yet to be uncovered. I, be, I believe so too. And you know, his current boss at the moment at, at Lutulia House is um, Senzum Kunu because he's the head of organizing and would mean that um, President serves under him. And when I was, um, I, I put through a phone call to him, like, 
Let's speak about these guy, this guy and the allegations that have been raised against him. Um, Senzo just felt that um, this, is, um, this is not a big story. Why are we making it a big story? Um, he believes that um, this is just a contractor who was employed by the ANC to work for the ANC, and there's nothing more to it. Well, certainly, I know you'll keep digging, and very soon you'll have those answers for us. Aldrin St. Pierre has been tracking the story for us on the channel today.